It is a blessing to be in the house of the Lord. Amen? Hallelujah. I want to invite you all to open the scriptures in the book of 2 Timothy. Amen? Hallelujah. I want to greet also our pastor. Hallelujah. And the family and all the church. Each and every member that is here this morning. God bless you. Hallelujah. And I hope you have come with an open heart to receive whatever blessing God has for you this morning. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 2 Timothy chapter 1. Bless the name of Jesus. 2 Timothy chapter 1. We'll read from verse 5 and 6. Amen. Praise the Lord. We praise the name of Jesus. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 5 to 6. And read the scripture with the blessing of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. When I call to my remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that in thee also. Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. Amen. You may be seated this morning. Hallelujah. May the Lord add his blessing unto his word. Blessed be the name of Jesus. And we'll be studying the word of God this morning under the topic, stirring up the fire that is in us. Amen. Stirring up the fire that is in us. We have been receiving many blessings these days. Hallelujah. And one of the main things that God has been calling us to do or to be aware of, to be conscious about, is that his fire is still in, in our hearts. It is that his fire is still burning. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Is that his fire, his presence is always there. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Is that his fire, the fire of his presence, the fire of the Shekinah, of the glory of God is always and always omnipresent, always there. Amen. How many can praise the Lord? And he has been calling us during these days. And, and, and if you have noticed, if you've been, how can we say, uh, uh, um, connected, blessed be the name of the Lord. If you've been following each and every message from the word of God, I, and I dare say, even from the convention up till now, God has been calling his people towards his presence. God has been calling his people to wake up and see that the fire is still burning. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That he has not changed. That his presence is still the one that has the power, I mean, the, 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 the anointing to change and touch the lives. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And we know that the fire of God is one of the symbols that God uses in his word, amen, to represent himself. And he's speaking here through the apostle Paul towards Timothy, blessed be the name of the Lord, because there came a time in this young man's life that maybe he thought that the work was too big. Maybe he thought that he was not worthy. Maybe he thought that he wasn't able to do the work of God because of his young age, because of uh, the less experience that he had in regards to Paul. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But the Lord speaks towards him through the apostle Paul and tells him, the fire is in you. You have it inside of you. Hallelujah. The only thing you and I need to do is to fan it into a flame, is to wake it up, is to stir it up in our lives. And the apostle re reminds him and tells him, Timothy, you have always had the fire. From the time that you were born, your, your parents, your mother, your grandmother took the charge to put that fire inside of you. To, to make you aware of the presence of God in your life. From the day we come to the Lord Jesus, God puts his presence in our life. How many believe that? From the day we accept the Lord as our Savior, as our God, His presence comes and lives in our life, lives in our heart. What the Lord did in the times of Egypt, in the time of the Exodus, He came down and lived in the tabernacle among His people. But now when we come to Him, when we, come, when we receive Him in our lives, He doesn't come in the tabernacle. He doesn't abide in the building. He abides in each and every one of our hearts. So the presence of God is here. How many can believe that? But it is us sometimes, just like the apost the, 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 this disciple Timothy, this young man, 
that we forget sometimes that God is in us. That the fire, that his presence is in our lives. And you know that fire has the need, there need to be three things in place in order to have fire. Amen? We need oxygen, you need fuel, and you need heat. Amen? These three things are important and essential to have fire. You need to have oxygen, you need to have a fuel, and you need to have a heat present in that place. And I want to bring that to your awareness this morning. If God is calling us to wake up that fire that is in us, to revive it, to fan that flame. Why is he saying that? Why is he calling us to do that in our lives? Is he calling us to drink fuel? Is he calling us to breathe more oxygen? Is he calling us to burn ourselves as, as, as the heat, to bring heat in our lives? Is that what he's calling us to do? No. We need to understand what God is calling us to do. If we see, we notice oxygen. All of us need oxygen in our lives. Otherwise, we wouldn't be alive. Isn't that so? The air that we breathe is the oxygen. Without oxygen, we cannot exist. And when we look at the word of God, God says, separated from me, there is nothing that you can do. God is the oxygen that we need in our lives. Without him, you have no life. Without him, you have no future. Without him, you have no hope. We need God's presence in our lives. He needs to be there. That's why the first thing that the apostle reminds Timothy is, Timothy, God's presence is in your life. It's you that have forgotten it. It's you that doesn't remember that God is there with you. He is important. We need him in our lives. He is the oxygen. He is indispensable. He is necessary. I need it. I don't know if you need it. I need him. I need the presence of God in my life. I need that oxygen of his presence. Blessed be the name of the Lord. When we notice when we get sick and maybe you're in the hospital and maybe you fall in such a condition that they need to connect you to the oxygen because you are not able to breathe on your own. And we see that the doctors tell the, the, the family or the person that is responsible for the one that is sick, they tell the person, he is connected to the machine. And we cannot disconnect him because if we do, he cannot breathe on his own. For the time being, he's going to need the oxygen until he can breathe on his own. Well, let me tell you, we cannot breathe on our own without God in our lives. I cannot exist without God in my life. I cannot be without God in my life. He is the one that gives my life meaning. He is the one that gives my life existence, a reason to keep on living. Why do you think people want to take their lives? Why do you think people commit suicide? It's because the devil sows that seed in their mind that they are alone, that no one cares for them, that they have no hope, that they have no reason to keep on living. But that's why you and I need God's presence in our life. He is the reason that I keep on living. He is the reason that I keep on hoping that one day he is coming for me, that he's going to change my life, and I'm going to go up into the heavens and be with him forever and ever. He is the oxygen that I need. He is the presence. Everything depends on him. How many can praise the Lord? And if you go to the book of Colossians with me for a moment, the book of Colossians chapter 1. Praise the name of Jesus. You'll see why we need him. He is the uttermost important thing in our lives. Colossians chapter 1 verses 17, he say, it says about the Lord, He is before all things, and by him all things consist. In other words, all things exist. It's by him. He is before all, and by him it is that we live. And sometimes we sing, we, we've, we've sung that song that says, in him we live and move and have our being. It is in him and it's not outside of him. Outside of him there's nothing. Because he was there before time. He was there before we came to exist. He brought us into existence. And that is why we need him in our lives. He is the oxygen that you and I need. And if we move on to the other element that is very important, to have fire in our lives, we spoke about fuel. Fuel is anything that has the ability 
to burn with ease. Anything that can burn easily, we, it can be considered as fuel. And you might say, well, what can be the fuel for the fire of God in my life? What is the fuel if I have God, but I don't have the fuel? What is the fuel? If you go back to the book of Romans, the, the same apostle Paul says, I beseech you, brethren, that you present yourselves as a living sacrifice. You and I are the fuel. You and I should be on the altar burning. You and I are the fuel for the fire of God in our lives. So some people have the oxygen. Some people have the presence of the Lord, but they lack the fuel. It's these kinds of people that they come, they praise God, they live for the Lord in, in, in a manner of speaking, but they have still their own opinion. They have still their own way. They have still the, the, their, their own stubbornness. But God wants us to surrender our stubbornness to him. God wants us to surrender our mind to him, our thoughts, my ways, my things, my desires, my dreams. Give it up to him. Put it on the altar as a fuel. And you will see what the fire of God can make of that fuel. When we put ourselves on the altar, God changes us. Because we go from a, 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 a being of flesh, a being of, of living according to the world, living according to the lifestyle of the world, we move on. He burns that up. He burns the desires of the flesh, the lust, everything that is not according to him. The fire of God burns it. And he brings out the best in us. He brings out that gold, that potential, that precious thing that he sees in us. He brings it out through his fire. But you need to be the fuel. And some people are afraid of burning. I don't know about you. I was afraid of burning. Who, who likes to burn? When you turn on the stove and you put your hand on that fire, do you like that feeling? It's not a nice feeling. Fire burns. It hurts. You feel the pain of the fire. Because there's something that is burning, a fuel. And that is sometimes when we are in, on the altar, we jump off the altar. You know that are people that jump off the altar? They decide for maybe, okay, Lord, here I am as a living sacrifice. And God starts to burn. <laughs> and he starts to raise the temperature. And the fire comes up. And you start to feel the heat. And you start to feel the pain of the things that God has taken away from your life. That's why when we are in his presence, we cry. Because God touches us in the innermost parts of our hearts. He touches us. Because he sees what we cannot see. He knows what is in our hearts. That's why David said, Lord, free me. Deliver me from the things that I am not aware of. Because there are things in our lives that we ourselves are not even aware of. But he sees them. And when we are on the altar and we say, Lord, here I am as a living sacrifice, he will start to burn those things. And they will cease to exist in our life. But after the process, you will see that you are purified. You will see that you are blessed. You will see that things will start to act in your favor. But it is because you are on the altar and working as the fuel. Amen. How many can praise the Lord? How many can praise the Lord? So we need the oxygen, which is God in our lives. The fuel is you and I as a living sacrifice on the altar. But there is still an element that is missing. Which element? So we spoke about oxygen, fuel, and heat. The heat is important in order to wake up fire. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now you might say, how can we bring heat in our lives? How, how, how can heat, what, what, is, what is the thing that God considers heat for his fire to burn in our lives that in order for me to awaken it? And, and, and notice, all of this is before you can fan the flame. Amen? You need to have these things in place before you can say, okay, now I'm going to stir it up. These things should be in place. So the heat talks about high temperatures. Heat is an energy that passes through one vessel or a body towards another. And it causes expansion and changes the state of the thing that is burning. Amen? In other words, we can call it friction. Heat is friction. Literally friction. 
Heat is when cells, molecules, start to rub against each other. When the molecules start to rub against each other, it causes heat. And we can say though, the fr- it's about the friction. Temp- high temperature, what does the high temperature do to our body? When we are sick, what does the body do? The body raises the temperature. Because there is something wrong inside our body. And our, our, our God that is so wise and omniscient. He causes our body to raise the temperature. That's what we call a fever. But it's a fever not to kill us. But it can kill you. But the body reacts because there's something wrong inside. And it reacts by causing friction. The molecules start to rub against each other to raise the the temperature to kill that virus or that infection that is going on inside. And also he talks about, hallelujah, when we boil water and we put instruments in it. For example, the doctors, nurses, they need to sterilize their instruments continually. Because they're working with blood, with different things, diseases, and the heat, the boiling water, sterilizes the instruments. So you notice why God turns up the heat in our life? Because he needs us to be free from anything that can cause a disease in your spiritual life. He turns up the heat. Sometimes we do not understand. We say, Lord, what, why, why am I going through this? Why am I going through this trial? I feel like I'm walking through the fire. But you need to understand and remember God has promised, even through the fire, I am walking with you. And it won't burn you. It won't consume you. You will get through it. It's a process. God is purifying our lives through the heat. Now you might say, how can we get to the heat? When we are in in that spiritual heat, The desires of the flesh are dead. They are killed by the high temperature that God raises in our lives. He sterilizes us in a way from all of the things of the world, the desires of the world, the desires of the flesh, the things that are not according to him. He sterilizes us. Notice I said when doctors, surgeons, they sterilize what? Their instruments. And God calls us his instruments. And for him to be able to use us, he needs to sterilize us. Otherwise, we will keep on spreading things that are not according to him. And he sterilizes us through the fire, through the friction, through the heat. Heat is what causes, amen, friction is what causes heat. And when God speaks about this friction, what does the word of God say? In the book of James, amen, he says, draw near. To me. And I will draw near to you. Come close to me. Come close to me. Come. Come close to me. Let's get connected. Let me bring you into the heat. Let me bring you into the fire. Blessed be the name of the Lord. When Moses was walking through the desert, not knowing that God's presence was there, God called him and said, Moses. And Moses saw a burning bush and he was drawn to it and that is what God wants us to draw near to him and when you draw near to God when he touches you touch is friction and touch his touch on our lives will bring over his presence the heat that we need in order to fan the flame how many can praise the Lord blessed be the name of Jesus and also heat is transported from one person to another God calls us to be like burning coals, burning embers. And when you have a burning coal in one hand and another coal in your hand that is not on fire, when I put the one that is burning towards the one that is cold, what happens? Two things can happen. When I put the one that is on fire towards the one that is cold, if I don't fan it, the other one won't turn on. But while it's there, the touch, the friction, and the heat, the blowing of the heat, the other one will also turn on fire. But there's a risk that if we go towards these people that we draw near to people that are cold, extremely cold, 
that when we are on the fire, we run the danger that they will turn us off. We run the risk that when we come into contact with them, they will put out the fire of God that is in us. That's why God wants us, to, wants us to draw near to him. Draw away, get away from those things that are cold. Those things that are putting out the fire of God in your life. Draw near to the fire. Draw near to his presence. Draw near to him. Hallelujah. And he will wake up that fire that is in you. But then there's the other case that if I have a burning coal on one side and another burning coal on the other side, and when they come together, what happens? A fire comes up. A fire burns up. The fire grows in, the, in, in those two coals. And that's why when we draw near one to another, when we come together to praise the Lord, what happened right there in the church of La 43? What happens each and every time we come here together? The word of God says, when we come together. And if I am burning and you are burning and we come together, God wakes up the fire. God wakes up the desire for him. God wakes up the desire to do his work. God purifies us. God blesses his people. But it is, we are, it is because we are together. It is because we are having that friction one with another. When I give you my hand, I say, God bless you. You feel the blessing of God. I feel the blessing of God because we are connected through his spirit. But it is all because... We are looking for the fire of God. We are looking to stir up that fire in our lives. And the word of God says what? What did he say to Timothy? Timothy, be aware. Know that the fire is in you. The problem is not God. Because when we say, Lord, uh, it, it, I don't have your fire. You, uh, what, ter, set me on fire. Set me on fire. Do you know what you're asking God to do? <laughs> set to set you on fire. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But we ask God, set us on fire, but analyze your life. Is God your oxygen? If he's your oxygen, are you on the altar? Are you burning on the altar? Blessed be the name of Jesus. Is there heat? Is the temperature up? Hallelujah. How's your life? The word of God says in the book of Revelations, when he spoke to the, 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 the church, he says, you, you should either be hot or cold. I cannot work with something that is in the mix in between. You need to be one of the two. If you're hot, I can set you on fire. If you're already, if you're cold, I can turn you hot. But if you're in between, I can't work with that. You'll cause me to vomit you. You need to be on fire. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And when we are on fire, we should not forget that his presence is there with us. Timothy, for a moment, forgot what God had put in him from the beginning. Because the word of God says, since you were a child, it was always there in you. Now that you are in a position to be used by God, God needs you to fan that flame. God needs you to wake up that fire. The ember is already burning. God calls us, the word of God says, the church is cons consists of embers, burning embers. We are all burning embers. And when we come together, the fire of God comes down on our lives. But the thing is, when we are just that burning ember, you cannot just be a burning ember. You need to consistently fan that flame. Consistently blow on it. So that fire can come out and burn continually. So when we look in our lives today, and you see the function of fire, fire brings light. Fire, hallelujah, brings life. Fire brings heat. We need heat to live. If you are in, in, in a desert by night, if you cannot light a fire, you will die because of the cold. We need fire. When there's fire, wild animals do not approach you. If you are camping outside in the bushes and you set a fire, when the animals see the fire, they will not come close because they are afraid of the fire. And that's why when you are set on fire, the devil will think twice before he touches you. Because he knows you are on fire for God. Hallelujah. On fire for God. And everything else, all the things that are not according to him, will go away from us because we are on fire. So there's, a, there's the danger that that fire will go out. But God gives us the key. He tells us, my children, I am inside of you. I, am, I'm, I have always been with you. But you need to wake up the fire in you.
You need to stir it up. You know what it is to stir up something? If we're, I don't have an example here, but picture for yourself a big vessel of water. And it's just standing there. The water is still. But when I put something in and I start to stir up the water, stir up the water, stir up the water, stir up the water, stir up the, water the water will get into motion. The water will move. The water will change. There will even be a little bit of foam. The water changes. There is movement. And that is what God wants in our lives. Stir up the fire. Stir it up. Fan it. Bring it into life. Bring God's potential out. Because he sees it. That's why he's in us. Because he sees the potential in us. And all he needs for us to do is fan the flame. Don't worry about how much, how, what, what you have to all you have to do is fan the flame. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let's stand to our feet this morning. And you, you analyze your life this morning. What is missing? We are asking for his fire. We know that he's going to do great things through the fire of his presence. But in order for that to happen, first we need to analyze, am I still missing the oxygen? Is God the first, the last, and everything in my life? Am I burning on the altar as he wants me to be? Are my desires surrendered to him? Are my dreams, my goals, everything, are they subjected to his will? Am I looking for the heat? Am I walking with the wrong crowd? Am I walking with the wrong people, people that are cold and that will turn me also cold? Or am I walking with the correct people, people that are on fire, that can set me on fire too, and that together we can burn for God? Blessed be the name of the Lord. Father God, we give you the praise.